Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Donald Trump's next cabinet beginning to take shape. Trump picking former New York Congressman Lee Zeldin to lead the Environmental Protection Agency. Trump saying Zeldin will, quote, ensure fair and swift deregulatory decisions that will be enacted in a way to unleash the power of American businesses. Joining us now is Tom Steyer, former Democratic presidential candidate, of course, and the co-founder of Galvanize Climate Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us around the table. So we're going to get a Trump 2.0. Potentially, they're going to roll back a lot of the work the Biden administration did when it comes to the energy transition. How much does it matter? Because the market is already off to the races. Well, let's talk for a second about what's really driving the energy transition, which is economics, prices, and markets. Over the last four years, solar prices have gone down by 60%. Solar sales have gone up 4x. If you look at what's happened to batteries last year, just in one year, they halved in China. The price halved. If you look at what's going on in terms of EV sales, we look at it in the United States, still going up, but not going up that fast. If you look at what's going on in China, they went up 11% month over month. They went up 50% year over year. When you look around the world, what's going on is abundant renewable energy. That is actually the story. What we're seeing in the world is a huge move to renewable energy and the energy transition happening much faster than people in the United States understand while we're talking about oil and gas, which is basically a stagnant market. So what does that mean to have a drill baby drill policy at a time where you already have peak oil domestic production in the U.S. and you have this transformation you're talking about? So so let's put some numbers on it so that we can really understand what we're talking about. The U.S. is the biggest oil and gas producer in the world. We do about 13 and a half million barrels a day. If we do drill baby baby drill, we could take 13 and a half and move it to 14. In the context of the world oil market, we're doing about 102 million barrels a day. That is not, this is a stagnant market. Even OPEC thinks that the total amount of oil sales will go up by 8% in the next 25 years. Solar sales went up 4x in the last four years. So what we're really seeing is an exploding clean energy market. We're, really, we're not going to ever, we're not running out of oil and gas, but what we're seeing is an abundance of renewable energy and a, an abundance of new technologies that are competing on price. You know, I wrote a book, Cheaper, Faster, Better, How We Win the Climate War. And really, that's all we're seeing is market forces, business. How do you win? Cheaper, it's cheaper. Faster, it's faster and better. And so when we look around the world, governments can't repeal markets. China can't repeal markets. Neither can Donald Trump. What we're seeing is people around the world acting based on prices, what's in their own interest and what's the best product. There is is another large source of energy demand that's really ramping up quickly besides the renewables or it goes in tandem with the renewables and that's the energy needed to power AI. Basically the amount equivalent to large cities needed to power just maybe even just Meta's AI demand. When you look at that and you look at the Trump White House push or the coming White House for deregulation, is there red tape that needs to be cut anyway to allow for this huge source of energy that's going to be needed to power the future? Of course there is. I mean, when you look at the United States, we are very, very slow in terms of permitting. We're very, very slow in terms of adding new clean energy products or oil and gas projects to the grid. So yes, we have a very slow moving um, process because so many people are allowed to weigh in. It just takes so much time. And of course, we should be moving much faster. But when we really look globally about where the new, we're talking AI can move U.S. energy consumption by 20% over the next decade. That's a huge move for us. But if you look around the world, if you see what's happening in Asia, Southeast Asia and South Asia, like in India, we are, it is going exponentially. They're going to do five times as much electricity by 2050, five times as much. And so when we really think about what's going on in terms of what's driving prices, what's driving volumes around the world, where the real business is, what we're seeing is it's really in renewables. And it's interesting, just as we touch on that oil, on that oil subject, OPEC has released their, their report Oil consumption is down 18% since July. This is the fourth consecutive cut that they have in terms of demand, and that's to do with China. I want to focus on 
One of the things that irks Donald, Trump's, Donald Trump, we know, is other people eating America's lunch. And any move that he makes to step back on IRA, which is done very well in the red states, by the way. Overwhelmingly in the red, red overwhelmingly states. Overwhelmingly in actually. the red states. So just how aggressive a pullback is there going to be? Because I can tell you what, there's a lot of European and global CEOs sitting out there who are going, I'm ready to eat your lunch. If you don't want to, do, if you don't want to build this business, we're ready to do it. Look, that is the point I'm trying to make, which is America has to compete. America, if we're going to, this transition is happening. America should be leading it. This is an absolute necessity for us to be the leading economic country in the world, the leading political country in the world. And I think it's going to be clear, no matter how Mr. Trump feels about what should happen, mm -hmm. what is happening is this transition. And American companies can absolutely dominate here. But we, have, but we have to choose to do it, and we have to put the money into it, and we have to put the manpower into it. So I look at this as a great chance for business, and it's just business. This is just about what is cheaper, faster, and better, and that is traditionally what Americans have done really well at. Well, then, what level of stimulus could we see from him? What level of incentive could we see for, for these areas? He's been very, 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 very heavy on the rhetoric against a, a lot of the incentives that were in the IRA, et cetera. So how does he temper that? How does he, how does he balance this? I really think that what's going to drive this is American business. That it's not, it, of course, the incentives of the IRA were important in terms of deployment of solar, of wind, and the sale of EVs. But the truth is, all of those things are going to keep happening globally. All of those things are going to keep happening in the United States. I mean, if you think about the idea of solar prices going down mm -hmm. by 60 percent, that would be oil going to 32 bucks, from 80 bucks to 32 bucks. That didn't happen. But you know something? It's not stopping down 60. We'll go down another 60 percent, and it'll be at the equivalent of 15 bucks Tom, per the, barrel of oil. If the That's private, dominance. If the private sector is doing this already, though, and there was concerns that spending too much at a time when inflation at one point during the Biden presidency hit more than 9 percent, then what was the point of something like the Inflation Reduction Act? The former president, future president, continues to talk about that he's happy with clean energy. He has someone like Elon Musk surrounding him, but he thinks it should be driven by the private sector. It is going to be driven by the private sector. It is driven by the private sector. I think the, when I think about the Inflation Reduction Act, I think about an attempt to try to subsidize companies that are clean to try and put them on a level playing field with companies that are polluting. That's really how I think about it. But over time, when these prices come down, the subsidies go, the need for subsidies goes away. And that's really what, you know, let me give you one example. Over the last three years, Texas has tripled the amount of solar it uses. Texas. They are by far the biggest wind producer in the United States. The four biggest wind producers in the United States are all deep red states. They're not doing it because they love the concept of renewables. They're doing it because it's cheaper, because it's good business. And that's what we're seeing is, in fact, cheaper, faster, better markets, prices, economics. That's what's driving this world. People are talking. People are saying things. But really what's going on behind the scenes is just, you know, you guys were talking about the dollar. What's driving the dollar? What's driving interest rates? Prices and markets. You can't revoke them. Right. We're in a world where, in fact, we are going a very straightforward way and we can talk about it and the sentiment can move back and forth but if you look at the first trump administration actually clean energy did really well it did okay. yes there was a lot of rhetoric there was a lot of anger there was a lot of emotion but the yeah. fact of the matter is the world just kept powering right through it tom we thank you for your time this morning it's great to see you tom steyer of galvanized climate solutions